we need to talk about amending a prenuptial agreement. First of all, you need to contemplate already and discuss with your clients what they foresee is happening. As they come in to sign a prenuptial agreement with you and to create one, they may be on the cusp of a job change. They may be on the cusp of an income increase. They may be looking at receiving an inheritance that they already know is coming to them. They may already know the value of it. They may know that they're getting ready to have a baby. These are things you need to talk to them, not just about what is currently happening, but what they foresee happening either way down the line or certainly in the near future. You need to discuss with them how to amend the prenup. They can certainly come back to you. They can certainly call you again and do the process all over again, but most clients don't want to do that. So you're, you're, you need to focus on not just getting them back as a client, but you need to focus on protecting them and making them happy. And what makes clients happy is to see you once and never to have to see you again. So you need to let them know how to amend this prenup without having to return to you. So therefore, you need to put provisions in for amending and modifying the prenup. You need to build it right into the prenuptial agreement. So they're all on the same page, they know how to do it, they know how to get it done, and it stays valid and enforceable. So, how do we do that? Number one, we talk about what it is that's foreseeable that they already see happening or anticipate happening. Build those provisions in, just as if they were facts. Not facts as presently existing, but facts that this is what they're anticipating happening. Then you need to address how they're going to discuss the changes, and if those changes in their life then affect how they've set up the prenuptial agreement. For instance, some parties say, well, I know I'm going to have a baby, or maybe I'm already pregnant, and upon the birth of our child, we're no longer going to have separate bank accounts. We want to then have joint bank accounts. Or they might say, we want to add life insurance policies. Or if we already have life insurance policies, we then are going to make them not separate property, but we're going to make them joint property with the surviving spouse being the beneficiary or having the child be the beneficiary. So you need to already talk about it, figure out what they want, and if they don't know what they want yet, they need to lay out how they're going to make it happen. So for instance, you might make sure that within X period of time before the child is born or after the child is born, they're going to have a discussion. They're going to put something in writing. They may need to amend and or update the asset schedules, liabilities, and income schedules that we've already talked about. They may need to amend those and add them. Don't remove the existing ones that are there, but add them with, with all of the updates and date it and sign it, just as they would have done for the original prenuptial agreement. One second, going back to the asset schedules, I refer to it as an asset schedule. Some states refer to them as financial schedules. No matter what they are called in your particular state, you need to make sure again, that you're including assets, income, and liabilities on them. And then when you go to amend them, you're probably going to need to amend all those three points as well, because their lifestyles probably change. They probably have either more or less assets, more or less income, more or less liabilities. And it goes back to a knowing waiver. What are they waiving? What are they agreeing to? If they don't have it laid out, if they don't know exactly how each party's, especially the separate property, but how they jointly have changed their estate, then those amendments are not going to be valid at the end of the day. So detail for them in the agreement how they're going to discuss the changes, that they need to make these changes in writing. They need to update the asset or financial schedules with all the changes in their assets, liabilities, and income. And then detail what it is that they're changing. Again, if they're changing their life insurance policies, detail what provisions that they're amending specifically from the original prenup to the amendment. Then they need to sign and date the amendment. 
They need to do it in front of a notary, just like they would have done in the original prenuptial agreement.